So to do that, you know, it can be really helpful to use advanced imaging. Um, so fMRIs are functional MRIs. Those are MRIs that we do while people are awake and talking and we ask them, you know, name objects or, you know, squeeze a ball and we see as they're doing things, what areas of the brain are lighting up. So we actually get a real time map of where the function in their brain is. And that can be particularly helpful for patients with tumors that push away uh, normal function into areas that you may not expect. Diffusion tensor imaging or DTI. So they're actually, it's a really amazing technology that we have where we can use the MRI to actually extrapolate the white matter tract. So we can actually see where these fibers are in the brain and we can select the fibers that are near the area that we're interested in. We can look at specifically motor fibers. We can look at sensory fibers. We can look at the visual fibers and the speech fibers. Um, and it can be very helpful to plan surgeries. So in the, um, the dominant side, like we talked about, the main areas, we talked about frontal lobe, that's where Sbrocas is, temporal lobe, that's where Wernicke's is, and then the mesial temporal lobe, that's the hippocampus that we talk about. So this is an example um, of an fMRI. This is an example of a, a patient of mine with a very large tumor. If you can see, there's a really bright white spot and this um, iso-intense hypo-enhancing or really non-enhancing lesion here. This is all a, what we call a glioma. It's a glial tumor. And so this, as you can see, is located not only in the temporal lobe, but also in the frontal lobe. And this is on the dominant side, on the left side. And so we worry about, you know, speech should normally sit right here and Wernicke should sit right here and Broca should sit right here. But you can see in this patient, you know, the tumor was really pushing speech up just about to right here. Um, and then we were able to actually track Wernicke's to right here. So that really helped us um, do the surgery. We actually did the surgery with the patient awake and we were able to remove all of the tumor without affecting uh, his speech at all. Um, so that's sort of how we use that kind of technology. This is an example of uh, diffusion tractography where this is a tumor and I was tracking the motor fibers. Motor should normally be right about here, but motor fibers are actually pushed back here. Um, and it really helps us to be able to plan effect an effective, safe spot to, to start the surgery. Um, so in terms of neuromonitoring, so we, we can use, we can actually monitor patients' motor function and their sensory function while they're asleep. It's a very useful function. Um, these things we call transcranial motors. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it, but generally we basically put electrodes in the scalp and we transmit signals uh, through the motor cortex and we can test the whole integrity of the system. So the electrodes are sitting in the head and then they're sitting on the extremities and all of the muscle groups that we're interested in. And we send the signal down all the way through and then see if it's working. And if we receive a signal in the muscle, then we know that the system, that there's integrity to that entire motor tract. Um, when there's any damage, we can get a reduction in the, in the signal that kind of tells us, you know, you know, I think we're, we're really close to this area or we're starting to cause injury here. So we, it helps us to, um, to gauge how aggressive we can be. So somatosensory about potentials, those are just the, the sensory potentials that we use. And then what uh, I use a lot is what we call direct cortical motor stimulation, where we use an electrode and we actually can put it on right over where I know where I expect motor cortex to be. And then we do something we call phase reversal, which basically uh, is kind of this neat tool where we can tell the difference between, we can tell exactly where central sulcus is because motor cortex and, and sensory cortex have the opposite um, the opposite directions of their potential. So as soon as we see that reversal in the phase, then we know that is central sulcus and in front of it is gonna be motor and behind it is gonna be sensory. Um, and then we could do something we call subcortical stimulation. So we use an electrode and we can stimulate deep in the brain and find actually those white matter traps. So that's really helpful. So awake electrocorticography. So that's where we're really doing, we can do direct functional mapping. So we can, you know, with, with someone awake, we can um, stimulate and test for speech areas um, and we can stimulate a motor area and then keep testing their function. We can really find exactly where the eloquence is. So this is sort of an example of how, what patients look like. So these are the scalp, the electrodes. These are some examples of electrodes that are put 
um, in the scalp, there's different types. These you know, strip electrodes kind of look like this. They look like a little strip, a little clear strip um, with small electrodes on it. Um, and we can sometimes use these little numbers to map out the areas of functionality that we're trying to avoid. Um, and this is an example of subcortical stimulation I was talking about where we use an electrode and we stimulate. This is uh, the motor track and we would stimulate in the area that we're working on and kind of get a sense of how far we are from the motor track. So we might say, okay, well, you know, we're stimulating um, at 15, we're getting some positive signal at 15. So, you know, we're probably, you know, a, a couple millimeters away. And so that's really helpful for us. Um, so awake craniotomies. Um, so this is, this, this is sort of, I, I use this from this Pacific Neuroscience Institute because um, I think there is a lot of interest in the idea of using music uh, during an awake craniotomy. I've never done that, but it's certainly the idea of an awake craniotomy is, um, is just that we're trying to preserve function and the best way to preserve function even when we have a good sense of the anatomy is to actually be testing function while we're doing it. So if you can keep someone doing the thing that you want to preserve and you're doing the tumor resection or you're removing the lesion that's abnormal, you can remove more of it if you're able to make sure that while you're doing that, the patient is having good function. And then if there's any sign that they, they start to falter or start to have difficulty, you can stop. Um, we usually have a neuroscientist with us or a, a neurologist with us doing the surgeries concurrently so that they're actually testing some nuances to function to make sure uh, we don't miss subtle, subtle losses in, in speech or subtle losses in motor function. Um, these are really, you know, we commonly do these awake craniotomies for uh, dominant insular tumors. Those are sort of some, like some of the tumors I was showing you before. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.